My name is John of RatchetStrapMedia.com and today I show you what's in my automotive camera bag. What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. My name is John, if you're new here consider subscribing and hitting that bell to get instant notifications when I upload new content. Today I'm going over what's in my camera bag for 2022. Uh, I'm an automotive photographer. Uh, I do a lot of drift events, car shows, stuff like that. And um, over the years I've pretty much figured out what I actually need. I've gone through a lot of cameras, lenses, GoPros, you name it. I've owned a lot of things and uh, pretty much figured out what works for me and what might actually work for you too after watching this video. There are a lot of different pieces of gear that you can actually get. I recommend watching some videos, reading up on some stuff to figure out what you're actually gonna need before actually buying things and wasting a whole bunch of money like I did. So let's check out my bag and I'll show you everything that I use. All right, so let's open this up. This is where I keep my cameras. This is my main body. Uh, this is a Canon EOS R6. I have the 24 to 105 F4L, it's the EF version. That's what I use on this camera. Kind of like a running gun setup, pretty much. You can get a decent focal length with that. Next up, this is my Canon EOS RP. This was my main body for about two years. Uh, it works pretty well. It's a mirrorless camera, full frame sensor, sub $1,000. It's a pretty good camera. It does not do log or anything like that, but you can get profiles for it to emulate Canon log. Another good thing to have is some type of a tripod. Try not to cheap out on this. Some of these tripods are pretty junk and if a good gust of wind comes, your camera's gonna go flying. Ask me how I know. So up here in the top, this is where I keep all of my lenses. This right here is my brand new Tamron 70 to 200 f2.8. This is something I use for the situations where I don't want to pull out any of my bigger lenses. You know, this will get from 70 millimeters to 200 millimeters and keep a constant aperture of 2.8. So it's really nice. I mean, you're not going to use 2.8 when you're doing this kind of shooting, but I normally keep it around f8, f9. It's not a huge lens, it's not super heavy, it's just an all-around nice lens to keep on this camera to get me from 70 to 200, you know, anywhere in between there. If I want to get cars that are going by right in front of me, it's a wide enough focal range to uh, get those cars. It also has image stabilization, so that's a huge plus. Next up, this is my Mikey Mecca EF85. This is a super cheap lens that I got on Amazon for like 200 bucks or something. You know, I didn't really uh, think too highly of this lens when I purchased it. It is one of my main lenses that I use to photograph drifting. At my local track, there's this uh, one track called the L-Track. It's exactly what it sounds, it's an L. and. Uh, there's a nice corner that you could stand on and get the cars like basically as they're going through the whole corner it just does such a great job it doesn't have image stabilization or anything like that but i've never had any issues with it it's just such a good lens the 1.8 but again don't really use it i use 1.8 for portraits and stuff like that but not for this so this lens is fantastic fantastic for automotive drifting anything like that Next up is my Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. Now this isn't something that I use to actually photograph drifting. It's too wide, you know, I, I can't get close enough to any of the cars with this lens. So this is pretty much for still photography. So when I'm going around the track or I'm at a car show or wherever, this is the lens that I'm using to take pictures of cars. I use this a lot for video. It's a great lens for that. You know, again, it's not image stabilized, but my camera's got an image stabilization built in. I have a, go a gimbal, fantastic lens. Super, super crispy. I love it. All right, so this right here is my workhorse of a lens. This is the Sigma 150 to 600. This thing is insane. It, uh, 150 millimeters to 600 millimeters. So I could stand pretty much anywhere on the track and zoom in on the driver picking his nose like it, it's it's insane the the amount of focal range with this thing it is a very heavy lens it requires me to use a monopod i mean i could hand hold it it just gets pretty cumbersome after a while i bought a gimbal head for my tripod which i don't use because i found out that it kind of just loosens as i'm panning with the vehicles but it's such an awesome lens it's super sharp has great colors and contrast it's the contemporary version it's not the sports version the sports version is even longer and heavier. If you're looking for a Sigma lens to capture 
birds or automotive racing, anything like that, I would definitely look into the 150 to 600 Contemporary. So this right here is my Rode VideoMic Pro. That's uh, obviously, I use that for vlogging. I'm using it currently. Uh, I put that on my little video rig that I have when I'm doing videos. If I want there to actually be sound, I generally don't edit to sound the vehicles going by or anything like that. But if for whatever reason I do, I have my Rode VideoMic Pro. And another thing you're gonna need too, if you wanna shoot vehicles and have it look like they are moving, shoot their motion, capture the motion, you're gonna need ND filters, you're gonna need polarizers, other stuff like that. So I have two sets. I have 67 millimeter and a 77 millimeter set. These basically fit all my lenses. You know, my 150 to 600 is like an 82 or an 85 millimeter or 95, I think actually. It's, it's absurd, so I just have one filter for that because of how expensive they are, but don't cheap out on stuff like this. If you have good glass, what's the point of having good glass if you put cheap glass in front of it? These filters are gonna allow you to stop down your shutter speed and um, allow you to capture the motion when you're taking pictures of the cars. So like panning shots, you'll focus on the vehicle, pan with the car, the background will be blurry and the wheels will be spinning and you'll capture all that. Can't do that without these filters. And last, this is my Zyun Crane S gimbal. It is a DSLR gimbal. Uh, I'm kind of finding that a lot of my camera and lens setups are a little heavy for this thing, but I use this for car shows, sometimes for drift events. If I'm wanting to shoot the car sitting around, it's not really fast enough for me to actually get good results with the cars as they're driving and actually drifting and stuff. I usually do that handheld or on a tripod, but it's pretty cool. I mean, I've used it I don't know how many times probably 10 or 15 times and I've charged the batteries once so when I do use it it works so that is what is in my camera bag for 2022 I'm sure it'll change by next year again I'm still finding with a lot of things that I'm using I'm not using that's one thing you're gonna notice about being a photographer you're gonna change your gear quite a lot my r6 is my third camera I started on a t6i and I had an rp and then I have the r6 you know you're, you're gonna find a lot of things that work for you and don't work for you um, you're gonna waste a lot of money on lenses and stuff, but hopefully you're able to actually learn something of like what I use for my specific reasoning as an automotive photographer. All clickable links are down below in the description. My name is John of RashJotMedia.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.